Family cannot be overemphasized over a man's success, and today we'll look at the family of the great Michael Jordan. Starting with someone who has always been a supporter and a true fan, his father. James Jordan Sr., Michael's father, was born on July 31, 1936 in Wallace, North Carolina, where he met his wife, Dolores Peoples, who was born in September 1941 at Charity High School. Michael's father, James, who was a supervisor at a General Electric facility, instilled in his son the values of labor, hard work, and tenacity. He is a lifelong supporter of basketball and was a major influence in Michael's decision to pursue a career in sports. He toured the United States to follow Michael's career, first at the University of North Carolina and then with the Chicago Bulls. You could say Michael's passion for playing was probably inherited from his dad as they both loved playing baseball and shared a unique bonding. James even had to construct a basketball court in their backyard. By 1993, Michael Jordan had dominated the basketball world. With the Chicago Bulls, he had won three consecutive NBA titles, and he also won Olympic gold with the renowned Dream Team. His fame appeared to have no bounds, and by his side, every step of the way was the man he considered his closest confidant, his dad. But tragedy struck on July 23rd, 1993, as James was declared missing and he wasn't found until August 3rd, 1993. To make matters worse, he was found dead in a swamp in McCall, South Carolina, and his body was already in severe decomposition. He wasn't even immediately recognized, not until August 13th when his family dentist provided his dental records. According to investigations, he was shot by two teenagers, Larry Martin Demery and Daniel Andre Green, while taking a nap in his car while returning home after spending the day playing golf. Demery and Green were, however, caught and sentenced to life imprisonment. This incident really broke Michael's heart, and shortly after, he announced his retirement, which shocked the whole world. But if you know the story well enough, you'd remember he came out of retirement about two years after. We'd love to go deeper into his career, but this video is family-centered, so if you'd love to see a video about Michael Jordan's personal and career life, comment below. Now, let's talk about his mother. In September 1941, Dolores was born as Dolores Peoples. She was born in Rocky Point, North Carolina, and graduated from Charity High School in North Carolina. In 1954, she met James Raymond Jordan Sr. while at a basketball game. Despite the fact that her brothers frequently played basketball with James Jordan Sr. at Pender County Training School, she met him for the first time at their school game. James Jordan Sr. soon requested her father for permission to take her out on a date, and they fell in love instantly and dated for the next three Three years. She traveled to Alabama after high school to attend a trade school while Jordan Sr. joined the Air Force and relocated to San Antonio, Texas. In 1957, the two were married and welcomed their first child, James Ronald Ronnie Jr. After giving birth to their daughter named Dolores, James Jordan Sr. decided not to return to the Air Force and instead began working at a textile mill. After that, the couple constructed their first house together and welcomed their third kid, Larry. Dolores and her husband moved to New York three years after. Dolores worked as a bank teller in New York, and James trained to be a mechanic, and in 1962, Dolores became pregnant again and at this time gave birth to Michael Jordan on February 17, 1963. Michael would, of course, go on to become one of the NBA's most successful players and the first billionaire basketball player. Dolores and her family returned to Wilmington, North Carolina shortly after the birth of Michael. After Michael, Dolores gave birth to another girl, Rosalind, who is the youngest of all the siblings. Dolores Jordan is more than just his mother. I mean, she has founded several charities and has been the president and founder of the James R. Jordan Foundation for nearly two decades. In addition, she founded the Kenya Women and Children's Wellness Center in Nairobi. Roby, Kenya. She was awarded the Clinton Global Initiative Award in 2005 and continues to give back to her community through the activities she creates. She encouraged her children to prioritize their schooling and religion along with numerous after-school activities. While still in high school, Michael began playing professional basketball in 1984, and Dolores and Michael Jordan sought to find ways to give back to the community as Michael's success grew. Dolores and Michael co-founded the Michael Jordan Foundation in 1989 to provide funds for underprivileged children. She was not only the foundation's president, but she also founded the Michael Jordan Education Club, which encouraged children to improve their grades and attendance. In 1993, six members of the group won a trip to Kenya. Unfortunately, James was slain in his car that same year. 
Dolores discovered her husband's assassins were two boys who didn't know love after her husband was murdered in 1993. She began to aid other children and their families. She was able to help underserved youth to succeed in their educational aspirations through the James Jordan Foundation. Many people are unaware that Michael Jordan's elder brother Larry Jordan was equally as talented as him. There are videos of Michael's older brother on the internet that show he possessed the necessary athleticism and skill level. Michael even confessed that his competitive drive stemmed from his older brother. Despite having talent and skills comparable to his younger brother Michael, Larry was unable to make it to the NBA. Growing up, both brothers participated in extremely competitive sports like tennis and basketball, with Michael frequently stating that Larry was on the same talent level as him. When Michael was considered the finest player in the NBA back in 1999, he mentioned his brother Larry as the toughest person he'd ever faced. Larry, according to Michael, was much better than him. In fact, Larry was courted by 17 universities and baseball organizations. Larry unfortunately never grew taller than 5'8", while Michael reached 6'6". Nonetheless, Larry serves as the Charlotte Hornets VP of Player Personnel alongside his younger brother and is one of the architects behind the selection of LaMelo Ball. He continues to assist his billionaire brother build his empire, and according to unconfirmed reports, Larry himself is worth about $1.1 million. Michael Jordan's eldest sibling is James R. Jordan Jr., who was born in 1957, six years before Michael. Also known as Ronnie, he served in the United States Army. He was one of 500 men of the 35th Signal Brigade. He had served in the Army for 30 years as of 2004, and in the brigade of 2,450 soldiers, he was the senior enlisted officer. When he went to airborne training, the 5'7 tall soldier was just 36 years old. Other officers, though, were in their teens or early 20s, unlike him. Ronnie became certain that the Army was for him while attending junior ROTC in high school in Wilmington. He was a non-commissioned officer and leader in the U.S. Army Signal Corps for nearly 31 years. He is presently the Charlotte Hornets Executive Vice President and Chief Operations Officer. When he retired, there was a three-day celebration at Fort Bragg, North Carolina with accolades from former Presidents George W. Bush and Bill Clinton, Ronnie's former colonels and 3,200 servicemen. Michael Jordan did not join them because his mother had asked him to wait until the second day of the festivities. Quote, I wanted Ronnie to have his day, she explained, knowing that the presence of her younger son would be a distraction. Dolores Jordan is Michael's older sister and the second oldest of James and Dolores J's five children. She is a divorced mother of three from North Carolina and has lived in Pennsylvania for the past 13 years. She went on the path to ultimately overcome old difficulties with her family and her terrible internal conflicts in 1993, just before her father's murder and before divorcing her second husband. Writing became an outlet for her as she tried to stay sane during those times. The road to bringing her narrative to life was difficult though, and dangerous at times, but she refused to give up. Her family had criticized, mocked, and ostracized her, but she knew she had to see it through. Dolores E. Jordan accused her dad, James Jordan, of sexual assault for years in her book, In My Family Shadow. She said that James had been abusing her for years, and the frightening report raised serious concerns. However, there was no way to verify her assertion, as he was already dead at the time. Dolores described how she initially reported it to her mother following a heated altercation. In Dolores' words, quote, Ending eight years after it first began and five years after losing my virginity to my father, it scares me to think how much longer the abuse would have gone on had I not spit out the dreadful truth to my mother during one of our many heated disagreements. Disagreements that were sometimes anything but pleasant and often featured no indication of love between the two of us. End quote. She explained how her mother decided not to prosecute James, and she simply told her daughter not to tell anyone else. She went on to say in her book, quote, So as she ranted and raved about how no slutty daughter of hers better get pregnant and bring any bastard children into her house, I finally heard myself saying, If I am so much of a slut, why don't you keep your husband out of my bed? End quote. When she eventually mustered the strength to speak the truth about her father's actions, she had no idea what to expect, but she never imagined her mother would turn on her. Her mother's words of betrayal hurt her far more than her father's actions even. According to Dolores, they spoke volumes about the fact that her mother really did not care about her, which her father obviously knew. She felt it was because her mother was so expressive with her dislike for her that probably made her father know he could get away with violating her. These were serious allegations. 
She also alleged that her mother threatened to send her to a boarding school for girls. There was no investigation because no complaints were submitted at the time, and while Dolores' charges are grave, there has been no acceptable proof to back them up. Rosalind Jordan is Michael's sister and the co-author of Salt in His Shoes and Did I Tell You I Love You Today, written alongside her mom, Dolores Jordan. She currently resides in Chicago. Rosalind is the family's youngest member and she collaborated with her mother, Dolores, to co-author a number of uplifting novels for children. Their children books are remarkable for incorporating drawings by African-American artists noted for their creativity and professionalism. Now we seem to have talked about all of Michael's siblings and parents, let's delve into his marriage background. Michael Jordan has had two marriages. His first marriage to Juanita Vinoy took place in September 1989. Juanita Jordan, Michael Jordan's ex-wife, was born in 1959 in Chicago, Illinois. They had three children named Jeffrey and Marcus and Jasmine Jordan, but the marriage was rocky from the beginning. Juanita Jordan sought divorce from Michael Jordan in 2002, citing irreconcilable differences, but she later withdrew her petition. She did, however, refile for divorce and was eventually officially divorced in 2006. Michael gave an enormous sum of $168 million to his first wife as alimony, which is one of the largest in sports history. Jeffrey Jordan was born on November 18, 1988, and was also a former basketball player who competed for the universities of Central Florida and Illinois. In May 2019, he married Redina Aniva after graduating from college. Jeffrey moved to Portland, Oregon, where he enrolled in Nike Inc.'s management training program. He co-founded the Chicago-based consultant firm Jordan Avakian Group in 2020. In September 24, 2021, Jeffrey was arrested in Scottsdale, Arizona for assaulting hospital staff. He was accused of using his fist to strike a nurse in the chest and was eventually restrained by a security guard. However, he has been released and has been living his life away from the media ever since. Marcus was born on December 24, 1990, and is Michael's second oldest son. He is a former college basketball player who was a member of the UCF Knights men's basketball squad. In 2009, he made his college decision deciding on UCF over Toledo, Iowa, and Davidson. Tyrone Slaughter, Marcus's high school coach, stated, quote, Marcus was searching for a place he could play, have an impact, and feel comfortable on campus. The family considered it unnecessary to carry on with the hiring procedure, end quote. UCF helped him feel at ease and Marcus was encouraged to contribute immediately away and given the impression that he might have a significant impact to Marcus for Marcus they desired. The union though fizzled out quickly. In 2012, Marcus made the decision to leave the squad following in the footsteps of his brother Jeffrey who left the team in January of that same year, but he did keep attending the same school. The same year, Marcus received a $350 fine for disturbing the peace while arguing with a woman in front of a hotel in Omaha, Nebraska. According to CBS, a police officer who wasn't on duty tried to restrain him after he got into a fight with two ladies in the hotel's driveway when he was in Omaha for the U.S. Olympic swim trials. Marcus did apologize for his actions at the police department after the disturbance. In the Walt Disney World Shopping and Entertainment Complex in Orlando, Florida, he opened the Trophy Room in 2016. This is an up scale shoe shop that sells Jordan's iconic shoes and other opulent athletic gear and is designed to look like Michael Jordan's own trophy room. The physical store closed in 2019 and the company has moved online ever since. Michael Jordan's first daughter and third kid is named Jasmine. She's only two years younger than Marcus. She was born on December 7th, 1992, went to Syracuse University, and earned a degree in sports management. She met her longtime boyfriend, Rakeem Christmas, while she was a student at Syracuse and became engaged to Rakeem in 2018 and gave birth to a son in May 2019. As a field representative for Nike's sports marketing division, Jasmine represents both Nike and her father's company, Jordan Brand. She has been instrumental in the Jordan Brand involvement in the WNBA and also represents some Charlotte Hornets players. While just having three kids with his ex-wife Juanita, Michael got married again on April 27, 2013 to his longtime girlfriend Yvette Prieto, a model from Cuba. Since their initial meeting in 2008, Michael and Yvette Prieto have grown their family. She was born in 1979 to Maria and Carlos Prieto. Despite beginning her career with her father, an entrepreneur, she soon transitioned into modeling. She led a peaceful life at first before breaking into the spotlight after marrying Jordan. Her most illustrious projects were for renowned fashion designer Alexander Wang. 
In a club in 2008, Michael and Prieto had their first encounter, and they agreed to live together in 2009 after a brief courtship. About three years into their relationship, Michael proposed to her, and the pair exchanged vows at a Palm Beach, Florida church on April 27, 2013. The ceremony reportedly cost over $10 million, and in 2014, they welcomed a set of twin girls, Victoria and Isabel. Michael Jordan's twins seem like they have made their names without relying on their father's wealth. Just after they were born, the girls were more like famous celebrity kids. They were born on February 9, 2014 in West Palm Beach, Florida. Even though the twins are older, Michael and his wife still look out for them and they don't tell the public anything about them. Considering that social media can be rather intrusive at times, this is probably their own method to protect the twins. Victoria and Isabel Jordan are already ants despite the fact that they are just 8 years old. This came after their half-sister Jasmine gave birth to her first child in 2019. Michael seems to have a very large family, and everyone overall seems to be doing just fine. Enjoyed this family video? Watch this one displaying right now.